everybody, welcome to Bish's RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd. Actually, welcome to Forest River where the Heritage Glen and uh, Hemisphere Travel Trailers are made right here, or Harrisphere Hemiglens, or Harry Glens, whatever you want to call them. This right here is, um, it, it's a little bit of a half twist on a very popular model out there. Like if you look at this floor plane, you've probably seen versions of this from a lot of different builders out there. But this one kind of is a little bit of an interesting amalgamation of almost any of the builders of this layout that I've seen before. And it brings a, a kind of unique uh, series of things to the table. So what's happening here is up front, we have a true queen walk around bed, but they, they have it on their Versatilt system. And it's a true queen, so if you're taller like me, it'll work. The Belly, this is enclosed and forced air heated with tank heaters and they went to a full like deep kitchen super slide and by doing so they were able to allow for some different things like bigger deeper kitchen uh, like counter space and storage but compared to the first prototype this I've recorded they pulled all like your kitchen cabinetry forward into that slide so you're not gonna get a forehead basher you know if you try to like jump into that thing too quickly uh, they also kind of revamped some things a little bit so you have a little bit more hip shoulder elbow room around the toilet and they gave this one a big, big pantry or bonus closet next to the dining while also giving us a little bit of an outside, I'm not going to call it a camp kitchen, but a, a bigger outside fridge. I think last year they actually had the small fridge and like a little griddle or something like that. And this year what they said is, okay, let's give you a big fridge. And if you want a griddle, you can add one because there's a gas grill quick connect. And if not, then you're not paying for something you don't want. Uh, then again, you've always got the fridge. If you don't want that, you can always remove it. I don't know. Whatever the case is, it's got cool things. Maybe not always perfect, but I like what they're doing, and I I think that this is I think that this is better than it was last year, and I think it was it's not one you want to overlook. And a major major update across the entirety of the Heritage Glen and Hemisphere Travel Trailer family is the fact that they have actually gone to a fiberglass roof. Um, so instead of uh, EPDM rubber, TPO, PVC, whatever, which is, uh, you know, that petroleum base kind of feels like rubber, sort of membrane, it is the same kind of fiberglass wrap over the sidewall uh, roof cap that like you might find on a motorhome, which drastically helps defend you against like tree branches scraping on the RV, weather in general. You know, we're gonna talk a little bit more about this when we go, but I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. And actually, you're gonna hear me later say, oh, I can't believe I didn't talk to you about this because at the time I hadn't, I recorded this later and spliced it into the video in front of everything else. So I'm going to sound like I'm repeating myself. And I guess I'm repeating myself. And it really does seem to be how different manufacturers are accomplishing things like the slide out and the bed that, that largely define how each brand goes about this. Um, which is one of the things I like when a floor plan is very popular and I like it when a lot of brands build the same floor plan because as a buyer, it gives you more choice, more selection and the ability to be more, uh, you know, more, more picky. I mean, let's be real about this. You are considering potentially handing over a lot of hard earned money. And let's make sure we're getting your second gear the first time, the one you're gonna like most. Um, over here, you will, you'll notice this is very pet friendly. They don't do floor vents or heat vents unless it's absolutely necessary to provide heat to a floor plan. But right here, uh, it is a carpetless slide out and it's a floor flush carpetless slide. And that marine woven like boat flooring that you're looking at right there, that will be going away. That will transition over to um, a, uh, a a primary floor matching like linoleum or whatever you want to call it. It's not actually linoleum, but um, that's the word a lot of people understand. But your your slide floor and your main floor are eventually going matchy match. Now I'm kind of curious. Um, we had this kind of debate internally in my company the other day. Uh, some folks are saying this this is a rear kitchen super slide camper, and some folks are saying it's a rear bath super slide camper. And I, I don't know that I necessarily feel the need to categorize it in a specific bucket like that. But if you had to give this floor plan one general designator, would you call it a rear kitchen? Would you call it a rear bath? Would you call it a middle living? Which almost makes the most sense to me. Um, and I think that's probably where the Grand Design Imagine came up with their model designator, the, uh, the MLE, the middle living and entertainment. Because when you're sitting over here in the sofa, you're straight across from that TV. Now, to be fair, I do think that TV's mounted up a little high, and I have been very vocal with a lot of manufacturers about finding ways to like put a drop-down mechanism on that TV to make it easier viewing. Um, I'm also not a big fan of the knee knocker pedestal post-style dining legs. I think that's a symptom of the fact that the uh, the Harry Glenn that we're in, 
Um, it's it's a camper that what I, it does what I call punching above its weight class. It hits some major big hitter features, but it is not the heaviest, most expensive, and and necessarily the the most highly detailed version of a floor plan like this. It is arguably one of the smarter class versions of something like this. So you know everybody has a little bit different take and view on something like this. Now we're going to see this bed up and down a few times. I've got it in the down position right now, just so you can get a uh, a really good look at it. But one of the things about this floor plan is, you know, you can just leave it down all the time if you don't care about the tilt function. But because this floor plan was originally built and engineered with a short queen, and it now features an 80 inch true queen, to close the slide, you do have to have the Versa tilt bed in the up position, um, in a sense, almost like a Murphy bed model, to be able to close the slide on this. And we're going to see that demonstrated uh in, in a little bit here um in the meantime though like i said just kind of giving you the uh the, the final look around work around walk around of everything although i think we're, we're pretty much to the point i can uh put that bed up which can be kind of cool like if you're stuck inside on a rainy day and it's although it is a nice open feeling smaller rv it can be nice to really just kind of have like a spot to like just lay down whether you're reading a book playing on your phone whatever the case may be. Some people like to kind of sit up, take a nap, you know, do, do whatever works for you. And that does make it easier to get to the tote storage down here. We will see uh, those in more detail in just a few minutes. I am a little bit surprised. Uh, some of the Harry Glens have um, a little more open face style, uh, like headboard power pockets, basically. You'll see that these actually have power outlets all the way inside the cabinet, but when the bed's down, there's a little cutaway cubby. Um, I do also appreciate the fact that you've got the breeze windows on both sides of the bed. And there's not a, um, a breeze across window here for the sofa because obviously you have a refrigerator in the slide right next to it. But one of the things that they do have here is a population controlling armrest. Although, one of the kind of neat little things on that if we pop open our x-ray vision is that it does have a, uh, some USB chargers inside. Now, if you don't like that hard fixed middle armrest, one of the things there is that's a sectionalized sofa. You can actually remove the middle section and scooch the other two together like a little bit of a love seat if that jelly's a little more your jam. Looking around the storage, around the bed here, one of the easy to miss things, there is a little laundry hamper in the bottom right section as you're facing the bed built in. And I do like that they include a privacy curtain in here. That is one of those extra little details that I don't see a lot of other manufacturers do. That's not the biggest TV I've seen any manufacturer use, but it can pivot around a little bit. The sound bar is kind of in the way and it's sort of built in. I don't know if you'd really be able to pull off a much bigger TV without getting kind of involved with it, basically. So if you're a big time TV fan, maybe this isn't the right version of this floor plan for you. I don't know. They don't currently uh, offer anything but a booth dinette uh, in this one. I would be kind of curious. If you could have a choice between some other seating that you could swap in and out instead of a booth dinette, what would you like? Um, Cougar does a really cool set of table and chairs that I think is nice. One of the things that I could, I could definitely see somebody liking is like a campsite elevated bar with a couple chairs. I'm kind of a sucker for the bar and chairs thing. They're, they're fun to sit at. Now, you know, if you're going to sit there, like work on your laptop all day, they're not the most comfortable thing. But uh, uh, I don't know that a booth dinette would be the most comfortable thing to sit there and work on a laptop all day either. And one of the unsung heroes of this floor plan is the kitchen, especially with the way they built that big closet pantry wombo combo in between the bedroom or the bathroom and the dining that is a one of the i think really key designating features on this and again last year when they first built this floor plan all of the kitchen stuff in the slide over here it was pushed back against the exterior wall this year they pulled it forward and that created some empty dead space behind it. Thankfully, they didn't waste it. When we get outside, you'll see they actually do have an outside uh, like cargo compartment door there. I do like all the drawer space. You've got seven really sizable drawers in here, although that is a smaller oven. If you're looking for the bigger oven version of this, uh, Cougar is one of the only ones I know of that is doing a little bit bigger oven. And the, uh, the skylight back here, and actually, I think that is a, yes, that's a powered vent fan, albeit the small one. You'll see the same small fan in the bathroom here, just to help keep some airflow moving around. Um, by the way, power outlets. I don't think you've had a good look at some of those for the kitchen. I think those are a very important thing to keep an eye on. Over here, 
even though the stove is not centered, um, you know, most folks are right-handed. I'm sorry, left-handed folks. The world's not always very kind to you. The majority of folks are going to find that counter space to the right of the stove pretty handy. And then under, I think it's the right hand. Yep, overhead cabinet. Oh, under both overhead cabinets, you also have some uh, power outlets over there in case you want to have like a little coffee maker corner or something like that. Now the bathroom over here, some folks hate this. Some folks hate the way this bathroom is set up because they feel like you're, uh, well, you're, pooping in the kitchen is how some people feel about it. I The way I look at it, uh, RVs are often cases where everything is packed on top of one another, and maybe this one is not the most comfortable looking and feeling for you. I can totally get that. I totally respect that. I've not seen the one that works for everybody, but um, hey, it is what it is. I can get you stuff with a more privatized, separated kitchen, but you're gonna have to start adding like two, three feet minimum to the RV very, very quickly to be able to accomplish that in anything else that has a, a, a comparable set of features like a sofa and a dinette and a walker on bed. You know, there's, uh, there's only so much room sometimes and sometimes certain things have to give. Now, like I was saying, this is now a true queen bed. No more shorty McShort pants, bed goblin union kind of uh, bed but you do need it in the Versa tilt up position to close that slide. Like we see right here, if that uh, bed was all the way down, I don't think that slide would wanna open properly. That is a, a Norco cable slide, by the way, just in case you're curious. And you might notice how I pulled that curtain up out of the way. The curtain to me is dangerously close to getting accidentally bound up in that slide. Now cable slides, there's not a whole lot to like grab and pinch there, but I don't want the uh, the curtain to get kind of like caught in the uh, in the seals or anything. One of the hiccups with this floor plan, because the original builders of this floor plan did not make it with this like full three foot deep slide like most tradi uh, traditional trailers. They built it with only about a two foot shallow slide. Um, as a result, what that means is that if you are a person of a little bit larger stature, the road mode travel access on this one is not potentially the greatest. Now, at my American size, I can slide through here, but it ain't pretty. Case in point, flipping the camera 180, going into selfie mode here. I got to do a sideways travel trailer two-step, and my old big old belly is rubbing against that uh, trim right there. And I'm not proud of that fact, but that is what's happening. But the fact is, without a whole lot of effort, I can slide back here to get to the kitchen to get to the bathroom space. Now, if you don't like that, there's other versions of this floor plan that do have some have similar, some have better travel access than this. Just a matter of which one works for you. And as long as I am already past the slide here, quick little peek uh, kind of from the bathroom position, here's sort of what we're looking at on this one. Again, it's a little bit tight here, but as you just saw, yeah, I, I, I can squeeze even my chubby buns through that thing. The, the funny thing is I, I got skinny buns, I just got a chubby gut. Again, we are at their factory, so you can probably hear a fork truck hauling an RV in the background. One of the other cool qualities on this specific model are the towability factors. What It's only like, what is it, 27 feet-ish, give or take a little bit, and uh, a little bit over 7,500 pound maximum weight, assuming full max cargo. That's a solid recipe for a lot of half-ton towing, especially when you factor in. This is one of the very few builders of this layout that does use wide stance stability uh, axle packages, which uh, basically it takes a lot of the porpoising and wiggle out of the towing equation, although I do not feel it is a replacement for a proper um, load leveling and anti-sway hitch. It'll just make the RV tow and feel nicely. And holy crap, man, call the Batman. Look at how redonkulously big this front compartment is right here. You could fit four or five bodies in that thing. Holy cow, man, you know. Uh, <laughs> does anybody get the reference right there? Sorry. I'm, I'm always afraid that, like, as I've gotten older, I think my references are starting to get a little bit dated, and I'm not sure that I care, because as you get older, I think you actually don't care. <laughs> now, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be picky, I'd rather be Josh, but if I'm gonna be picky, I feel like the awning could have been a little bit longer. It does feel like maybe it should have extended back a little bit further, but it's not like the awning space that we have is bad by uh, any means, at least in, in my uh, opinion. Those are Goodyear Endurance radials, by the way, down there. You've also got a drunken Uncle Leash latch right over here between the, uh, the tire and the front door, so you can keep your four-legged furry friends on your campsite 
and uh, under the awning, which is nice. It's actually something that Harry Glens are really good at. They make sure that they keep everything under the awning. Now, I can't remember. I think last year this had a small fridge and a little pull-out griddle underneath of it. And uh, I, I, I don't... I can't remember. But anyway, they put... That's what they do now. They put that college kid dorm fridge over there. And uh, uh, it... I don't know, it just really maximizes the cold storage capacity. Now, this is something I really should have talked about in depth sooner. The roof. Thankfully, it's not on fire. But they got away from like a, a, a TPO, rubber, uh, uh, etc. roof membrane. And they have a fiberglass wrap-over roof cap on this thing like a motorhome. Now, that doesn't magically make this a maintenance-free roof or anything like that. The, the roof membrane itself is obviously very weather and impact resistant, far more than a, a, a common rubberized or TPO or PVC roof would have been. Um, but you still have all the same sealants up there. So you, you are going to have to still make sure you keep on top of your seasonal maintenance. And to help you do that, you may have noticed how they are prepped and ready for a telescopic removable ladder. On the back here, that's a, I checked it yesterday, 250 pound rated accessory hitch. And you've also, of course, got your stinky slinky sewer tube. And I write, I like how uh, readily available that is. And that, um, that man, that beeper, that is, uh, that is aggressive. But I guess at the same time, that's a safety device. So I, uh, I don't take uh, any offense to that whatsoever. Now the, uh, the square flow windows, again, that you're looking at, giving you good airflow while also having those handy bug screens. On the back, even here, on their smallest members in the Hyperlight family of the Harry Glens, we still have a 60,000 BTU tankless on-demand water heater. What that means, if you're taking a shower and somebody fires up that kitchen sink to get some hot water, or the outside shower over here to get some hot water, because that is hot and cold, uh, it's it's you're, you're gonna still enjoy a hot shower because it can actually keep up um, When you're looking at tankless on-demand water heaters from a lot of manufacturers Make sure you ask questions to get an idea of like what is their BTU heating capacity? Uh, because there are some that are 30 40,000 BTU which is okay for shower time But again if you want the convenience of that dual function you need that 60 plus BTU um, This is space when they when remember how I said when the video began they pulled all of the kitchen countertop forward in the slide so it's not a deep you know forehead bash and head banger it created this extra pocket outside and it's what i call endoscopy storage because to to access it you look like you have to to give yourself a lower gi scope and you know if they made the door totally vertically i i don't know how you would be able to reach latches that's why the door kind of just reaches up in there up in there basically uh, but at least they didn't waste the space. And I like how even that's a nice magnet hold back. Um, their main front baggage doors, you might notice, are slam latches. Uh, little additional accessory doors or whatever, those will be uh, the the butterfly latches and a, a key lock uh, kind of system here. And it's kind of funny because they're not using the same size baggage door on both sides. But what they call the small offside baggage door is still bigger than what most manufacturers give you on the camp side of the RV. And then it just gets larger still. Again, if I'm going to be ultra nitpicky, uh, I, I would like it if that battery disconnect and the solar charge controller were slid up on that wall a little bit just to be a little bit better protected from shifting cargo. But, like, that's how looking for trouble with mapping glasses, I feel like I got to be on this one. Overall, I, I feel like this is like a 9.5 out of 10 kind of rating. Like, this is really i think a solid camper no camper i've ever seen is perfect no camper i've ever seen is for everybody but overall man i feel like this is good oh i haven't even talked about the fact the underbelly is enclosed forest air heated has tank heaters and a radiant barrier by the way let me ask you this real quick while i got you here so this one does not have any sort of front windshieldy kind of thing because this falls into their hyperlight series but when you move up into a full blood harry glenn or hemisphere they have windshield nose caps. What would you say to having that nose cap on this 22RK HL floor plan that we just looked at? Or do you prefer a layout like this with no windshield? I, the factory didn't ask me for that. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just wondering, kind of curious. Well, when our video began, I mentioned that 
there's no shortage of builders making a layout like this. So what I'm gonna do is leave you links in the description where you can see videos I've done of a lot of other versions of this over the last couple of years, as well as check for pricing and availability on these, whether it's a Heritage Glen by Wildwood or a Hemisphere by Salem. We have some in stock at, like we, we carry both at, at different locations basically. So uh, one link to rule them all, you'll be able to check all the pricing and availability right there. And take a look at a couple of those other videos if you're willing, and let me know which one you would go with and why. I'll tell you, I am personally very sweet on the 22 MLS Cougar version. Um, this is very good. This is very good. Imagine's version is very good. You know, the J Feather version, it's just a good floor plan, really. But let me know which one you would go with. I, I, I'm gonna have to really, I'm gonna have to really boil this back down and evaluate which one I feel best about. I don't know. But in the meantime, you don't care. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> Stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.